Hello on YouTube, welcome to another video. This video is going to be about the Volvo again. Um, someone asked me the other day, what's it like living with a 20 year old car? And I thought, that sounds like an idea for a video. So here we are, what's it like living with a 20 year old car? Um, it's alright. Now the reason I've got a 20 year old car, there's a few reasons, but the main one is that I don't want to spend a lot of money on a daily driver. But, there's some science behind it as well. Isn't it? Maybe not science, but there's definitely some theory behind it. And um, it all backs up behind something called Bangonomics, which you might have heard before, you might not have heard it before. Uh, there's actually books on it. If you go on Amazon and have a look, there's people writing books about the practice of Bangonomics, which is kind of what we're doing. And you know, the basic principles of this is, if you're like me, you don't want to spend a lot of money on a daily driver, you don't want to be spending two or three hundred Four hundred pound a month, whatever, um, on a on a on a nice modern car, just to uh, you know look look posh in front of your neighbours and your colleagues. If if you just wanted to have a car to drive around in, um, and you don't really care what what people think, that's one thing about Bangonomics is you know, you're always going to get something a bit cheap and shit. So let's just concentrate on the Volvo, right? The Volvo. So I bought this Volvo. It's a V70 T5 CD, which means it's got probably the best engine in the range and arguably one of the best specs full of money. Um, I paid a thousand pounds for this car and it had a few issues when I bought it and you know I think I had to replace the, the radiator and a couple of suspension bushes but overall I'm probably about 1300, oh, actually I'm about 1500 pounds into this car now over the year, that's, the full, that's including buying the car and running it for a year uh, that's including, I changed all four tyres um, to Michelin Conti Winter Contact or something like that not Michelin, Continental Winter Contact. So yeah, I've got fresh tyres, fresh radiator. The car's not really giving me any trouble this year and uh, I'm looking forward to, to it continuing to do so for quite a while. But why would you want to do Bangonomics? Why would you want to run about in a, in a shitty old car? Mm, mostly if you're tight. That's, that's, that's how it works, I guess. Or if you just don't like spending the money. Like I say, I'm not the kind of person who, and if you are this kind of person, then there's nothing wrong with it, you, you, you do you, but I'm not the kind of person who feels like they need to drive a nice car to places to impress people, you know, to... A lot, a lot of people out there are paying a lot of money a month to have a car just to say that they've got it. And, you know, that's... Whatever, that's just, how, that's just the world that we live in now, that's just, that's just how it is. And uh, we can take a moral high ground by saying, oh, I, I, I own my car, but at the end of the day I'm driving around in a, a 20 year old Volvo V70, you know, it's nothing to be too proud of, but, you know, it does the job, it does the purpose, and I'm happy with it. Volvo's easily as fast as anything else um, on the road that you see dicking about, you know, like your 320 diesels and stuff like that, I can easily, easily burn by them, and actually it's, it, was, it was a good match against a 330 the other day as well, but... You know, it's, it's, it's surprisingly fast. I did a little clip pulling onto the motorway uh, just earlier this afternoon, so you can see it's not a rocket ship by any means. It's 240 PS. Um, traditionally, Bangonomics, you're not really going out to buy a performance car, but when you start looking at all these cars that are available for, say, under £2,000 and that are ranging from between, like, 10 and 25 years old, then you'll see these odd performance bargains, and that's exactly what the T5 is because you're getting all this performance, 240 PS. Uh, it's mated to a four-speed automatic, but... It does all right. It seems to long, having the longer gears just just seems to kind of exaggerate the speed slightly, and it's it's, it's genuinely fast. That's one thing that I really like about the Volvo. But that's not like a principle of Bangonomics. You might prefer luxury, and you might be able to get yourself like an LS four hundred or a, an old seven series or anything like that. A bit more of a bulk factor with them as well. Bulk factor. Okay, so bulk factor and Bangonomics kind of go hand in hand, and these are piston heady phrases. I don't know where they originated, but probably piston heads. The bulk factor is. Say, if you're going to buy a £50,000 car for £1,000, then you know, you've still got that £50,000 maintenance cost, but you know, the, the bulk factor is huge because, say if it's something like a 750IL, if you've got a V12 7 Series, then you know, you've got 12 coil packs, 12 spark plugs, just stuff like that, which you know, can go wrong, and that makes the, the maintenance and the keep going of the car just that bit more expensive. But on the Volvo, the Volvo was solid. The Volvo's took some right abuse. I've only done about four or 5,000 miles on it since purchasing it in January this year. But I do give it a hard time, and I, I always drive like that. I drive, I, you know, I always give cars a hard time. Um, you've probably seen, you've seen my, my videos of driving um, on track and things like that. I do I do like to, to push in cars, and the, the Volvo's no, no different. Good thing about the Volvo for me is, the one, one reason I like it is, it's not dynamic at all. The engine's about five foot in front of the front shock, so you know it's it's got absolutely no chance of, of, of 
you know, having any real steering feel or any, any um, turning traction, but it's not too bad. And with it being a, an automatic as well, I've been practicing kind of left foot brake as well to try and get it, try and get the nose down. And um, yeah, it's good. It's good fun, more like a, a left foot brake practice car in a sense. This car's done 126,000 miles, which you know is, is quite low for a 20 year old car. You know, it's only like six or seven thousand a year, so. It, it's pretty fresh to be fair. The seats are all in good condition. Um, there's no, no real problems on the interior, no, no real obvious signs of wear. The steering wheel could, could be a bit smarter, but some of the switch gear looks a bit, a bit dirty, but that's probably just from me, you know, going and working on the cars and just coming in here and just getting my grubby mitts all over everything. But on the whole, things are pretty nice in here. So let me tell you what I got for my thousand pounds. I've got leather seats, as you can see, but they're also heated which is very nice, it's currently, uh, what temperature have we got? Right, the temperature's currently uh, zero, like bang on zero, so it's pretty cold today. Heated seats in the mornings, very good. We've got heated wing mirrors as well, heated rear screen of course. Got all the traditional like 90s executive mods as well, like front spotlights, fog lights, and you know, rear fog lights of course. I've got a trip computer, which is actually quite depressing because uh, then I can view my fuel consumption. One thing that is quite bad on the Volvo is the fuel consumption I get. Well, the average now is showing 21 miles per gallon, but I do do mostly town driving. It's, it's like 80% town driving that I do, which is a lot of stop start, and you know, which is kind of why I'm glad to have the automatic as well. But it's not the best. Um, it's not the best scenario to have for to, for fuel economy. On the motorway, it'll do 30 miles per gallon ish. Um, but yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not a fuel efficient car. That's one of the things that you're going to get with with these older cars compared to newer cars. Even the petrol newer cars, you know, these are just just thirsty. But you know, they were built at a time when fuel was probably about 80 pence a litre. So, you know, it's, we were nearly double that. So, you know, back then it wasn't a major concern. Although I did actually find a, a press a press um, kind of a review of this car when it first came out, and they, they commented the same, saying that you know, be careful because the fuel consumption sign it'll cost you a lot of the pump. Little did they know how much fuel prices would increase over the next 20 years, but yeah, because I don't do that many miles, it's not a massive concern. Now, when I was looking at purchasing the Volvo, I was in kind of a, an odd time where I'd, I'd just bought an E36 Touring that ended up being shite, and I needed a replacement car pretty fast. But at the time, I was considering looking at these kind of PCP and lease deals that a lot of people are doing these days, just to get me a daily drive, just to get a car that I can drive to work and back. And I was looking and, you know, for about three, three hundred and fifty pounds a month, you can have something relatively nice. So what I thought was nice, I was looking at Mark 7.5 Golf GTIs. That's what I fancied, or a, a Golf Irish State or something like that, I thought would be really naughty. But then you're pushing the boundaries up to about 350, 400 pounds a month. Now, when you look at that cost over 12 months, you know, it's going to be like three and a half, four grand on the car, then you have the additional insurance and stuff like that. This car, including purchasing and you know, even putting the winter tyres and everything, I'm still under £1,500 for the car, and the car's probably worth about that. So, really, it's free motoring. That's the thing about Bangonomics. You're not actually investing that much of your money. You're paying for the insurance, the tax, and the fuel, but, you know, you get the car cheap enough, and, you know, it's cheap enough so that if this car lasts me two years, and I just scrap it at the end of it, you know, it'll probably have cost me about two grand over two years, you know, for, for running costs, saying that if I put another £500 into it next year, which... You know, I'm not saying I will do, the car's showing no issues at all, but if I did have to replace something, I'll say, you know, an issue went wrong, I'd still want to be two grand into a car over two years, a grand a year. It's um, it's not a lot, is it, when you think about it? And that's why that's why this kind of stuff interests me, because obviously I spend quite a lot of my money on, on doing other things with cars, you know, on, on track and, and stuff like that. So just to have a car to run about in, I'm trying to keep costs low, and that's where Bangonomics is just like, you know, it's just the one to be for me and probably for a lot of you as well, you like saving money and being a bit tight. I don't know if it's fair to say tight, because I think it's just, it's easy to play on the fact that, oh, people driving around old banger cars, they're just looking to save money, or they're just tight bastards, and, you know, just because, I think that's just because it's different, you know, you're doing something that's not traditionally the norm, and um, it's easy for people who are spending three, four hundred pound a month on a car to look at something like this and think, oh, you know, I wouldn't want that, but... In reality, when you, when you look at the, the costs and thinking that I've got I've got basically everything you've got, you know, I've got my heated seats, I've got loads of luggage capacity in the back, I've got a really bad stereo. The stereo is not, not, not great in this car. Um, oh, just to touch on that, that's one thing, obviously, with a 20-year-old car is uh, multimedia. How are you going to get your, your iPod plugged in? Well, iPod fucking, showing my age a bit. Uh, how are you going to get your Bluetooth plugged in and all that? Well, 
there's one solution and it's not really a, a solution that I would recommend but it does it does work I'm streaming some music now over Bluetooth and it's from one of these FM transmitters which ultimately are a bit crap really I've never I've, I've used a few of these and, and they've never been good but um, yeah this is a this is like a tenner off Amazon or something like that so what happens is I connect this to uh, my phone with Bluetooth and just stream Spotify this then transmits the signal over FM connect it via FM it's it's, it's, it's not great I'll, I'll let you listen to it right so we're gonna plug it in it's very shiny Normally connected by now, so yeah, there, there, there is a bit of faffing about. But let's just get this connected, and then I want to show you the uh, the, the static's a bit crap. But Bluetooth connected. There we go. And then my music automatically starts playing, which is nice. But that's that's a feature of the phone. But it's it's, it's not it's not the worst setup in the world. I can listen to music. The sound quality is not great. And one thing that's really quite poor with this setup is. If I just pause the music. Bluetooth disconnected. Waiting for connection. It is a bit of a faff. Bluetooth connected. Okay. So I've paused there. Now, can you hear that? It's the static. And that's... I guess it's just because of, you know, you've got this little eight pound or whatever it was little transmitter running through the 12 volt connection trying to power this signal out and um yeah this the static's not the great i'm sure you can get better solutions and i'm sure you know I, I could simply just change the the head unit but i quite like the head unit i quite like the original one it's got these little sliders for the bass treble and fade i, I quite like dicking about with it. it looks quite nice as well in the center console everything together the cd player uh, works somewhat but the laser is very weak on it so it does tend to skip quite a lot so i do tend to just keep this um this this, this bluetooth solution going it's not like i say it's not the best but i'm not willing to invest any more time in it you know so i've got bluetooth in my car for for like a tenner i know a lot of you guys have been doing this as well with these fm transmitters you can say what you want about them some people will say maybe maybe one's better than the other but ultimately i've used a few now they're all the same you all get static on them it's, it's not it's not ideal but it does the job so yeah, that's one way you can get Bluetooth in, and then what more do you want? You've got Bluetooth heated seats, you've got 240ps uh, turbo charge, five-cylinder powerhouse, um, all the room for everything in the back. You know, I, I can't see myself uh, replacing this car anytime soon. And I just wanted to make a video on it, because somebody asked me, what's it like living with a 20-year-old car? And, you know, it's been a couple of weeks since an upload, so apologies, this has just been me chatting to the screen, but uh, hopefully it's given you some things to think about, and I'm sure some of you out there have got some stories about Bangonomics as well. Let me know in the comments. LS400 has always been one that I want to uh, I want to do with the Bangonomics, but I don't think I'm ever going get, to get to do it, because I like having an estate, and, you know, there's no point having more than one car just to do this kind of stuff in. Um, but yeah, an LS400 or, or maybe a, a leggy E39, but that's the problem with a lot of these cars such as E39s and uh, the E38s as well. If you want to get a nice one these days, they, they've kind of gone by Bangonomics now, you can't really pick up a nice one that you'd want to, well, a nice one that's nice enough to daily every day uh, for, a, for a low price of, you know, like I say, this car cost me a thousand pounds. I don't think you can really get, like, faster, more space, more spec. For them, you, you tell me what can you get for a thousand pounds, which does everything the Volvo does. Not a lot. Um, to say it's a completely original standard car as well, you know, I've not pissed about. Well, I've obviously put that daft air filter on, but that's just to make more more boosting noises. But you know, to say that I've not dicked around with anything, it's still fast, does everything, seems reliable. It's it, it, it let me down once this car. It's let me down once, and that was. Completely my own fault. I was uh, flying on a back road, loads of water, ended up soaking the distributor as I went through a puddle overtaking a car. Bad, bad, bad night. Uh, the, the, the distributor was soaking, the car wouldn't run. Left it for a couple of days, come back and got the car, it was fine. That's the only one issue that I've had with this car. Everything else, absolutely fine. Starts up first time every morning, even in you know these freezing temperatures that we're having lately. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to testing it with these winter tyres on as well. I got stuck in the snow last year, that's one thing that kind of pissed me off. Being an automatic car with with you know some some, some weight on it, it just just didn't really go. But I'm hoping these winter tires will, will uh, rectify any traction uh, issues that we're gonna have in the in the winter to come. Right, just to kind of conclude the story, then what's it like to live with a 20 year old car 
honestly, it's 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 fine. I, I really I really quite like it. One of the things that you get with this car as well when you park it in a car park, there's never another one. And when there is, it's like whoa, you know. I get I get <laughs> it excites me. It's, it's sad that isn't it? it excites me when I see another old Volvo, but it's just uh, it's just the way it is, I guess. Right, so let's see your banging on stories in the uh, in the comments. Um, I mean, I've got some stuff to do now. I'm fucking dicking about all afternoon, so I'm going to leave it. In fact, I tell you what, let's try and go for a little drive with the camera there, because last time I tried this, it, it it shook quite a lot the camera, and it it wasn't very good. But maybe we can go for a little drive. The uh, one of the heated wing mirrors, actually, I just remember that trip replaced one of the heated wing mirrors, um, but that was I can't remember how much it was, but it was not a lot from Nick's garage. Um, I can still see out of it, but it just wasn't heating up. Well, oh, the driver's seat on this car is electric as well. All the adjustments electric. Um, but the passenger seat is manual. You, you don't get a fancy seat on the uh, passenger, just me who gets that. So heated and electric, basically an M3. It's not dynamic, the Volvo, but once you get used to it, you can start to um, you know, balance the weight. <laughs> I'm starting to think I, I just enjoy driving. I don't really enjoy cars that much, but you can have fun in any car, I think. And the Volvo is still a lot of fun. I mean, the, the power obviously makes up for that a lot. I don't know how I'd feel if I was driving around the naturally aspirated version, but yeah, certainly this T5 is nice. Well, nice. Yeah, yeah, let's go with nice. It's actually on Coney suspension and some random lowering springs. I, I don't know what the lowering springs are, but some uh, some lowering springs. And it drives all right. Yeah. I've got a feeling the dampers aren't in the best condition. Um, when we hit small bumps, the car can kind of vibrate a lot. Of, well, maybe not vibrate, but it doesn't feel the best on, on tiny on tiny bumps. But I've never really investigated it. It still it still drives. It's, it's, it's one of them with daily cars. If it ain't broke, I'm not going to fix it. So. Just perhaps could be better, but it's a 20 year old car, and when you've got a car of this age, you're less worried about things like that. You're less worried about things going wrong because if I, if I wake up tomorrow morning and this car doesn't start, or if this car, you know, I'm driving it and the auto box blows up or anything like that, I'd be good. You know, I'd be annoyed about it, but in reality, I've not got I've not got a lot of money in it. I can just fucking go on Facebook Marketplace or something, go on Gumtree, get myself another one. Throw it away. I know it's wrong to um, to say you know to throw it away because that's kind of what we're doing. We're trying to save these cars, aren't we? A little bit by keeping them going. But if it does let me down, which it probably won't, you know, it's not it's not a massive job to replace it. This uh, it's getting quite heavy. This rain. These Continental winter tyres got a lot more traction than the good years that were on it before. 100% more traction. Well, not 100% more traction, but <laughs> got more traction. They're, uh, like I say, it's, it's, it's zero today degrees and um, it's fucking cold, man. And the previous tyres that were on it were Goodyear efficient grips, I think. Just, you know, the, the Goodyear normal road tyres. And uh, they, once they started getting cold, they would just spin and spin. And every time I tried to set off um, quickly, I'd just, I'd just get tyre tire spin, wheel spin all the time. Which is kind of fun, but also not the best way to be setting off. Especially if you uh, want to try and keep a low profile. Which is another thing that I like about this car. It has got a low profile, a Volvo Estate. You know, who cares? I have been pulled over in it once. I got pulled over in it the other week. Uh, but that was, that was my own fault. But in reality, the Volvo, it's, it's, it's a pretty safe car to, um, if you're worried about the police, which you shouldn't be, come on. Why would you be worried about the police? But if you are worried about the police, then it's pretty, it's pretty good to, uh, to fly under the radar. Or it is, in my opinion. Or I did think that until I got pulled over. Now, I know I've already said that the Volvo is fast, but it, it does genuinely make it that bit sweeter to drive. You know, knowing that, okay, it's an old fucking Volvo and it looks like a bit of a, a bag of crap or whatever. So, to, to an average person, you know, obviously we know better because we're a, we're a higher class of citizen with our um, 1990s car knowledge that, that puts us above everyone else. So, when, when we look at cars like this, we know you know, 850R. It's not an 850. Now we know this is a V70 T5. We know that's a classic Volvo that'll you know probably give the owner 
years of trouble-free uh, motoring, which I'm hoping this does. But we'll see. Okay, I feel like I can kind of go around in circles now. I've said what I want to say. Living with a 20-year-old car is fine, it's great, I love it. It's the best thing that I've ever done. Honestly, like, I wouldn't live any way else. Oh, yeah. I think if, if you want to, um, I think if you want to save some money, you want to play Bangonomics, do it, absolutely do it. Maybe look at reading the book or something, probably give you more of an insight, but the basic principles are you're running cars um, for as little as you can and you're trying to get something interesting at the same time. You know, you could buy a Scenic or a, an Astra or anything like that and I guess that's technically Bangonomics, but come on, I think, I think the fun part of the game is getting something like this, which has you know, got quite a few toys, it's a bit special, under the radar and a thousand pounds. Why not? Okay, that's enough rambling, so what to take from this video, just, just go go buy yourself a 20 year old Volvo, live your best life, you're going to be so happy, you'll, you'll be as happy as I am if you, if you buy a 20 year old Volvo, I, I really, really recommend everyone does this, because the, you know, the miles per gallon is pretty weak, but the smiles per gallon, I never stop smiling, so yeah, recommended, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.